Hey everyone, it's Amy. Today I have a big ass book haul for you. Recently, my local library had a library book sale, which is like my favorite time of year. They have two a year and their books are a dollar each. So safe to say uh, I did some damage there. And then also I've been doing some damage at my local Goodwill. They recently opened up one of like the I don't know, super centers or something, whatever it's called in my area. And uh, they've been getting some great stuff in. I've been going there like every week and picking up a couple books every single time. And their paperbacks are 49 cents and their hardcovers are like a dollar, dollar 29, something like that. So a lot of these books are from there as well. I have bought some new books. I do have some books that I got through book boxes. I think some of this is from Book Outlet and Thrift Books as well. Yeah, I have I have a lot of books to show you. Let's get started. I have sectioned these off into genres. So if you're only here for a certain genre or you don't care about a certain genre, I will leave timestamps down in the description so you can skip around if you would like to. Some of them might be in the wrong category, but I haven't read these books yet. So I just, and some of them are like, you know, mixed genres. So I don't know. Anyway, let's just get into it. I have like 50 plus books to talk about. So uh, yeah, I'm going to try and keep it brief. Let's start with horror because that's my favorite. This I think is like horror fantasy, but I picked up another book from Brahm called Lost Gods. Uh, I recently picked up Slewfoot by Brom, and I really, I just really love the way he structures his books. Like there's always like this really cool artwork inside. This one has the center pages as well. Look at that. Oh my God, they're so creepy and so good. Look at these. Ugh. And he does all the artwork as well. He's an artist slash writer look at these oh I just love them so much I would love like these I would love big art prints of these so gorgeous can you even see beautiful um so I'm super excited for this I have no idea what it's about maybe I'll just like read a blurb or something for each of these because that's fast and that'll give you like a general idea of what the book is about um so this says lost gods is like Robert Johnson I don't know who that is, singing ghostly blues on the shores of a haunted river in hell. It's like Dante played out in muggy rural graveyards and the depths of purgatory on the eve of a demonic war. Lost Gods is an adventure tale and a mythic odyssey. It's the kind of story lovers whisper in stolen cars, burning rubber from this world down to the very edge of the abyss. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Uh, I can't wait to read it. I also grabbed another book to add to my Anne Rice collection. I have another one in here as well, but um, this is, I don't know what book number this is, but it is in the Vampire Chronicles series, um, and I'm trying to collect them all. I'm reading them all at the moment. I've already read this book before, but I didn't have like the hardcover edition. The cover is kind of weird. <laughs> I don't, I don't know that it reflects what is actually in the book, although I can't really remember, so maybe. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a vampire novel in her Vampire Chronicles series. I think this is, ugh, I don't even remember what book this is. I think maybe this is seven, maybe. I also got Little Star by, I don't know how to pronounce this author's name, but this one here. This one says, uh trying to find one that actually says what the book is kind of about. A very scary tale indeed from a writer who is a master of his genre. Uh, sophisticated horror that takes the genre to new and exciting levels. There's nothing really about this book in it, but I think it's about a young girl that gets found in the woods and raised in a basement and then goes on like some American Idol sort of thing and then is introduced to another girl and I don't know, there's a reign of terror or something like that. So yeah, I picked up this one from the library book sale, a dollar. Can't wait to read it. Um, I also recently got Carrion Comfort from Dan Simmons. Super creepy cover. Like, what is that? <laughs> 
uh, let's see, a monumental epic of horror, dark fantasy, and intrigue. Um, Karen and Comfort is one of the scariest books ever written. Whenever I get asked the question, who is your favorite author? My answer is always Dan Simmons. Epic in scale and scope, but intimately disturbing. Carrie and Comfort spans the ages to rewrite history and tug at the very fabric of reality. A nightmarish chronicle of predator and prey that will shatter your worldview forever. A true classic. Sounds amazing. Um, I also grabbed two books from Josh Mallerman. I got Unbury Carol and <laughs> Inspection. This one is like about a woman who gets buried alive. And then this one is about a group of boys who are raised in a tower, very isolated. I think it's for some kind of experimentation or something, but sounds really intriguing. I also grabbed a copy of Cirque Berserk by Jessica Guest. This is our July group read um, for Dark Hearts Book Club. If you're unfamiliar, I have a book club. I will link it down in the description. It's free for anyone. This is like a super fun summer slasher. At least it sounds like it's going to be. I'm really excited to read it. It's just a short novella. I think it's like, yeah, like around 160 pages or so. I think it's about a group of teens, an amusement park, and uh, a slasher. <laughs> So yeah, I'm excited to read that one. Really cool cover. I grabbed String Follow from Simon Jacobs. This is a fairly new release. I think it came out in, I don't know, January, February, March, sometime early this year. Um, this is another one that involves like a group of teenagers, but I think it has to do with like some kind of ominous presence or something like that. Anyway, it was blurbed by Mona Awad, so I knew I had to pick it up. It's, uh, her blurb says, String Follow is a work of evil genius that put me in a literal trance and didn't relinquish me until the final page. Like the irresistibly wise, dark, and unfathomable force it conjures, the voice got in my head and tainted my soul. I loved every insidious second. If she loved it, I'm hoping I will love it too. Um, but yeah, I just, I had to pick it up. And then this one I picked up for a recent vlog. I've actually read it already and you will see my thoughts for it coming shortly in a few weeks. So if you want to know my thoughts, make sure you're subscribed and look out for that video. Um, but this is Seven Visitations of Sydney Burgess by Andy Marino. This is a possession slash addiction story. Marino offers horror both existential and visceral, equal parts surreal, hyper-real, and darkly hypnotic, an, innov an innovative take on possession, delivering a shocking ending. Next up is thrillers. I got Under the Skin by, I don't know if it's Michael or Mikkel Faber. This, I've actually seen the movie adaptation for the one with, um, Scarlett Johansson. Really enjoyed it, but I've never read the book and I've been wanting to read it so bad. And I found this at my library book sale for a dollar. So I, I was so excited. Um, it says alternately gorgeous and terrifying, lyrical and brutal. Under the skin compels and teases, satisfying and successful. A compelling, unusual tale blends elements of science fiction, grotesque comedy, horror and thriller. Yeah, so this isn't, I don't know. I don't know that this is really a thriller. It definitely has like sci-fi elements. Uh, it's just, it's it's a weird book or the movie was weird. And um, I really, I can't wait to read the book and see how they compare. I also got The Woman in the Dark, a novel by Vanessa Savage. This might be a horror, but the back says thriller. Um, I've recently seen this on Book Outlet for like six bucks, but I actually found this at my local Dollar Tree. So I got really excited and was like, oh, I'm gonna grab it, it's Buck. I read this brilliantly creepy thriller in one weekend because I couldn't put it down. So scary, pacey, and compelling with a very clever twist. I'm one I'm still thinking about now. And then the little tagline on the inside says, what she can't see can hurt her. I have no idea what this book is about, but cover super cool. So I'll check it out for $1.25, you can't beat it. Um, I also found Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. This is the writer of, um, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Razorblade Tears. 
I haven't read that one either, but I've heard this author writes um, similar to like Quentin Tarantino movies, very bloody and action heavy. So I'm excited because I love Quentin Tarantino movies. I still haven't read Razor Blade Tears, but I saw this on Book Outlet for $2. So I was like, mine, I'm taking you home with me. Uh, a superb character study wrapped up in a high octane heist novel, an urgent, timely pitched jolt of American noir brilliant, brilliantly looks at race, responsibility, parenthood, and identity. A roaring full throttle thriller cracking with tension and charm. Sounds great. I found All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. This is a archetypal murder mystery. The kind it seems the kind it seems like everyone has been hungry for since Gillian Flynn's Gone Girl and Paula Hawkins The Girl on the Train. Miranda's main characters are more than victim or femme fatale. All the Missing Girls is set to become one of the best books of 2016. I don't know if it was, but we'll see if I like it. Um, an astonishing debut thriller. Oh, this was her debut. With a jaw-dropping twist, the story is told backward. Oh. I, I quite like that when like the ending is at the beginning and then you go back through the story to see what happened. I quite like that. So hopefully I'll like this one. It gives like summer vibes. So hopefully I'll get to it this year. Um, I found this one at a free little library. So I didn't pay anything for this one. Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. I recently heard somebody talking about this one and how it's an underrated thriller. I can't remember who. Maybe Emma from um, Drinking by My Shelf. Maybe. I can't remember. Um, it says a huge summer read. One of those great stories that you can't put down. Dark, twisty, razor sharp writing. Uh, propulsive prose. The reveal is a real doozy. A legitimately shocking, completely unputdownable sequence that unfolds like a slow motion horror film. It instantly elevates Luckiest Girl and that momentum keeps going until its final pages. Sounds fun. I love the cover. Love me a black rose. The next three are ones that I found at my local Goodwill. So I got all of these next three for a dollar. I found The Loop by Jeremy Robert Johnson. I, I feel like I've heard good things about this, but then I also feel like I haven't heard much about this. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, but it says Stranger Things meets World War Z, which sounds very interesting. Um, the Loop is the Cronenberg film we never got. It's a volcano of a book, violent, compassionate, restless, and opulently strange. The Loop is a wild and wonderfully scary novel, a genuine thrill ride stuffed with conspiracy theories, science gone wrong, and brutal terror. The Loop is hilarious and horrifying, a shitload of fun. Wickedly entertaining, pretty much Stranger Things meets Rogue One. So maybe this is more of like a horror sci-fi something? <laughs> I don't know, but it sounds really interesting. I'm down for anything that's compared to Stranger Things. Oh yeah, this is um, also blurbed by Chuck Palahniuk, Stephen Graham Jones, and Paul Tremblay, which is awesome. So yeah, I can't wait to read this one. Um, I found the library at Mount Char. I've been wanting to read this one for so long. I believe this is like a cult novel. A Missing God, a library with the secrets to the universe, a woman too busy to notice her heart slipping away. Uh, a terrific book full of dark mystery and genuine beauty, a first-rate novel, a sprawling epic contemporary fantasy about cruelty and the end of the world, compulsively readable with the deep resonant magic of a world where reality is up for grabs. Funny, horrifying, and original, the kind of story that keeps yanking you off in ridiculous new directions every time you think you know what's coming next. And then I found Dean Koontz's Elsewhere. I've actually never read a Dean Koontz. I've seen plenty of movies based on his, based on his books, like Phantoms and stuff like that, but I've never, I've never read one of his novels. There's no blurbs on this, but I think it's about, um, yeah, a dad and his daughter, um, they have a quiet life until a local eccentric known as Spooky Ed shows up on their doorstep, um, and he entrusts them with hiding a strange and dangerous object. Um, but after the visit, a group of ominous men 
uh, Jeff and Amity find themselves accidentally activating the key and discovering an extraordinary truth, a device that allows them to jump between parallel planes um, at once familiar and bizarre, wondrous and terrifying. So another one that's kind of sci-fi-ish, like a sci-fi thriller sort of thing, portal fantasy something. I don't know. Sounds interesting though. This one I bought full price, um, but it's for our book club pick for June. And that is If We Were Villains by ML Rio. I had to get this beautiful hardcover because I'm obsessed with this cover. The end pages are so pretty. I'm just, I'm looking forward to this so much. It's like a mystery thriller, murder, murder mystery, I believe, uh, possible secret society vibes, Shakespeare vibes. Very, very excited. Dark Academia, I don't know if I said that. Much like Donna Tartt's Secret History, ML Rio's sparkling debut is a richly layered story of love, friendship, and obsession. Both comic and tragic, this novel asks what people are willing to sacrifice in the name of ambition. Expertly plotted, beautifully written, If We Were Villains will keep you riveted through its final electrifying moments. A genuinely breathtaking literary thriller. I hear a lot of great things about this one. It has super high ratings for a thriller. I've gotten so many messages since I've announced this as our group read for June that this is a lot of people's favorites and they're so excited for it. So I can't wait to read it. These, these next ones are kind of like thriller, literary fiction, dark literary fiction, I don't know, satire. But uh, if you've been around for a few months, or if you are part of my book club, we read Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk in March. And I've read, I hadn't read that one before. That was my first time, but I have read a couple other books from him, but it was a really long time ago. I've read Haunted and Lullaby, um, but he has quite a good size uh, backlist. And I've been wanting to check out more from him since I loved Fight Club so much. So I went on Thrift Books and... I don't know why. I don't know why I did this. I don't know why I decided that I need to own everything that he's ever written. <laughs> um, but I got six books, six. So I grabbed The Invention of Sound. This one actually I think I got from um, Book Outlet. This is his newest one that came out last year, I think. Um, I have no idea what it's about. Like Edgar Allan Poe, Palahniuk is a bracingly toxic purveyor of dread and mounting horror. He makes nihilism fun. One of the most feverish imaginations in American letters. Um, a father's decades long search for his missing daughter, a woman about to engineer the perfect scream, the most dangerous secret Hollywood has ever kept. Sounds cool. Can't wait to read it. Um, I did get Lullaby again. This one, I like I said, I've already read, but it has been so long, over a decade. This one is about, there's no blurbs to read on it, but I remember that it's about, uh, I think, a man who hears a lullaby in his head, and if he like allows it to play out, people die. Something like that, something along those lines. Can't quite remember a lot from it, but can't wait to reread it. I got Choke, which is about a man who like fakes choking on food for money. From the author of the International Sensation Fight Club, a powerful and hilarious novel about the love and strife between mothers and sons, the addictive power of sex, the terrors of aging, and the ugly truth about historical theme parks. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's funny um yeah so looking forward to that snuff uh which is about a like a snuff film i think or like a porn film 600 dudes one porn queen a world record for the ages a must-have movie for every disconcerting collector of things erotic did one of us on purpose set out to make a snuff movie survivor brilliantly satiric and savagely funny a wild amphetamine ride through the vagarities of fame and the nature of belief in america at the close of the 20th century unpredictable and unforgettable survivor is palinic at his deadpan peak a mesmerizing unnerving and hilarious satire on the wages of fame and the bedrock lunacy of the modern world cool cool and then lastly i got invisible monsters i wanted the one with like the beauty queen on the cover but that's fine i got this one i think this is about like a fashion model who becomes disfigured and then 
I don't know, goes on like some kind of revenge killing spree or like just seeks revenge on people for whatever reason. I don't know, but it sounds really interesting. So give that one a go. Um, I grabbed Requiem for a Dream by Hubert Selby Jr. I've been wanting to read this for quite some time. I think I actually have this on ebook, but I never get to it. I love the film. Um, this is about um, drug abuse and use. Um, there's like heroin addicts, <laughs> um, dealers, uh, an older woman who gets addicted to uh, like weight loss pills. Um, it's quite sad. It's very dark, but I loved the film. So I got the book. Hopefully I love that too. Slammerkin by Emma Donahue. So this is like a historical fiction. It takes place in 1748. Uh, Mary Saunders hungers for linen and lace. Her lust for shiny red, red ribbon leads her to a life of prostitution at a young age. A dangerous misstep sends her fleeing to Monmouth and the refuge of the middle-class household of Mrs. Jones, her mother's childhood friend. There she becomes the seamstress her mother always expected her to be and lives an ordinary life of an ordinary girl. Although Mary becomes a close confidant of Mrs. Jones and has a catalytic effect on the entire household, her desire for a better life leads her back to prostitution. Ultimately, Mary remains true only to the three rules she learned on the streets of London. Never give up your liberty. Clothes make the woman, and clothes are the greatest lie ever told. And it is clothes, their splendor, and their deception that will finally lead Mary to disaster. I found uh, Margaret Atwood's The Edible Woman. This is... Ever since her engagement, the strangest thing has been happening to Marion McAlpin. She can't eat. First meat, then eggs, vegetables, cake, pumpkin seeds, everything. Worse yet, she has the crazy feeling that she's being eaten. Um, Marion really ought to feel consumed with passion, but she just feels consumed. Brilliant and powerful work rich in irony and metaphor, an unforgettable masterpiece by a true master in contemporary literary fiction. I love this cover. Can't wait to read it. These I also found at the library book sale. I love the, the spine, how they make the face. Um, I grabbed William Faulkner's The Sound and the Fury and As I Lay Dying. I have read or I have watched film adaptations for these, but I haven't ever read either one of these books. Um, the Sound and the Fury is... One of the greatest novels of the 20th century. Um, it's about the tragedy of the Compson family, featuring some of the most memorable characters in American literature. Rebellious caddy, man-child Benji, haunted neurotic Quentin, Jason the brutal cynic, and Dulce their black servant. And this one is about a family. The mother dies and then they have to travel to another town to bury her. Um, but this is like back in the day when they had to travel by horses and it becomes this like big, long, arduous journey, bunch of crazy stuff happens. It's pretty dark. So it says the novel ranges in mood from dark comedy to the deepest pathos. I don't remember this being funny to me, but maybe it's written differently than the film. And then I also picked up The Kite Runner by Khaled I don't know how to say the last name. It's powerful, haunting, moving, and unexpected, riveting, unforgettable, evocative, genuine, extraordinary. This is one of those unforgettable stories that stay with you for years. All the greatest themes of literature and of life are the fabric of this extraordinary novel, Love, Honor, Guilt, Fear, and Redemption. Sounds amazing. I think I'd really love it if I gave it a chance, but... I'll read it one of these days. Um, and then these next five are ones that I got from book boxes. Uh, these two are from May's um, Nightworms package. I got Jawbone by Monica Ojeda. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce the name. I think this is like a coming of age, something like that. These, these are both horror. Um, Fernanda and Annalise are so close they are practically sisters. A double image inseparable. So how does Fernanda end up bound on the floor of a desert cabin, held hostage by one of her teachers and estranged from Annalise? Sounds crazy. Um, Jawbone is a dark fairy tale in which a group of girls become adults on their own, taking blood oaths with cruelty, torture, and vengeance. This book summons the evil spirits that surround all adolescents 
and they're made to speak straight into our ears, as chilling as it is necessary, like all of Ojeda's work. Sounds super good. Um, I've never read anything by this author before. I actually hadn't even heard of this book before until it got put into the Nightworms package, so I can't wait to read it. Sounds super good. And I think this is a translated work as well. And then this one um, just came out. It's a new release, Just Like Mother by Anne Heltzel. I think this is a, a cult, cult horror novel. Fun fact, dolls creep me the F out. I hate them. <laughs> Um, so this cover gives me the grapes, but, um, it's usually like this in my, in my bookshelf, so can't see it. Um, set to be one of the year's most talked about books, a fierce, frightening novel, a total thrill ride, buckle up and be warned. There's no calling for mommy. This novel will sink its teeth into you as much as its incisive social commentary as for its deliciously gruesome horror. Spine chilling and sharp. This is a modern gothic novel from a fresh new voice in horror. Um, and then these next three are from Book of the Month boxes. I don't have a subscription to them anymore, but these were the um, May, April and May boxes. Um, so I got the Hacienda, the Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. This is a Mexican Gothic meets Rebecca in this debut supernatural suspense novel set in the aftermath of the Mexican War of Independence about a remote house, a sinister haunting, and the woman pulled into their clutches. Love the cover. Can't wait to read it. The Change by Kirsten Miller. This one sounds really interesting. A gloriously sharp and funny modern saga about three women who discover that midlife brings a whole new type of empowerment, putting them on the putting them on a collision course with the evil that lurks in their wealthy beach town. I think it's about like three three middle-aged women, so like late 40s, early 50s, something like that, um, going through the change, you know, menopause. Um, and then while going through the change they actually start like developing special powers and then i don't know learning secrets about their town and evil lurking and i think they find like dead bodies or like solve crimes or something i don't know sounds super fun and then this was the april box i got the fantasy pick which is i don't know how to pronounce this kai kai kie kai Kai, 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 I don't know, um, by Vashnavi Patel. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Beautiful cover. I, I think this is a retelling of some kind of Indian folklore. Um, it says, I was born on the full moon under an auspicious constellation, the holiest of positions. Much good it did me. Something about a woman, girl, I don't know how old she is, um, desperate for independence, um, she turns to text she once read with her mother and discovers a magic that is hers alone. Um, with it, Kai Kiai transforms herself from an overlooked princess into a warrior, diplomat, and most favored queen. And something about like an evil from her childhood stories threatening the cosmic order and something like that. So sounds interesting. Would like to get to this eventually. Next. All right. Um, what should we do next? Uh, maybe sci-fi. I don't read a whole lot of sci-fi, but I have really been in a sci-fi mood. So I picked up a few books recently that will hopefully satisfy that that urge. Um, I got The Lath of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, I saw this on, what's her channel? Books with Emily Fox. Uh, she reads a lot of sci-fi and fantasy and she really liked this one, so I thought I'd give it a go. It's really short. Um, a rare and powerful synthesis of poetry, science, reason, and emotion. Um, profound, beautifully wrought, in a future world racked by violence and env environmental catastrophes. George Orr wakes up one day to discover that his dreams have the ability to alter reality. Um, I got We by, <laughs> I don't know what, how to pronounce this author's name, but there you go. I love this cover so much. Um, this was the dystopian novel that inspired George Orwell to write 1984. Um, when I heard that, I was like, okay, 
sold. I, that's all I need to hear. I got The Power by Naomi Alderman. This, I believe, is about like women having the power to like kill with their hands. The power terrifies and illuminates, enrages and encourages. All over the world, women and girls are discovering they have the power. With a flick of their fingers, they can inflict terrible pain and even death. And with a small twist of nature, everything changes drastically. Sounds amazing. So can't wait to get to that. I got The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. This is a trippy domestic thriller which takes the extramarital affair trope in some intriguingly weird new directions. I think it's about a woman and her clone and her husband. Like this woman and her husband, the woman finds out she has a clone or something like that and the clone starts sleeping with her husband or something. I don't know. It's supposed to be kind of weird. I think Kayla really likes this one from Books and Lala. And then lastly, out of the sci-fi, I got um, A Peculiar Peril by Jeff Vandermeer. I think this is actually a YA, which I didn't realize when I first bought it, but the synopsis sounds so interesting. In the strange, wonder-filled epic, Jonathan Lamsh Lamshed stands to inherit his deceased grandfather's overstuffed mansion, a veritable cabinet of curiosities once he and two schoolmates catalog its contents, but the three soon discover that the house is filled with far more than just oddities. It holds clues linking to an alternate earth called Aurora, where the notorious English occultist Alistair Crowley has seized power on a magic-fueled rampage across a through-the-looking-glass version of Europe replete with talking animals and vegetables. Um, fantasy. This one, I don't know if it's fantasy. I think it's like dark academia with fantasy vibes. It's Vida Nostra by Marina and Sergei Dyachenko. Vida Nostra is the anti-Harry Potter you didn't know you wanted. A brilliant dark fantasy combining psychological suspense, enchantment, and terror. I love this cover. I think, I think Kayla recently read this one too in the last few months. Maybe it was last year. I don't know, but she liked this one too. So give it a go. She is a true influencer, isn't she? Get me to buy a bunch of books. Um, this one, I don't know why I bought this. <laughs> Probably because it was a dollar. I found this at my local uh, library book sale. I picked up A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. Yes, yes, I picked up Akatar. I don't know when I will get to this. I'm not like a huge Sarah J. Mass fan or anything like that. This is like a fae fantasy romance, but it's YA, so I don't expect it to get super steamy, at least not in like, not in like a smutty way. <laughs> um, I think it gets more adult as the books progress in the series, but I don't know. FOMO, I guess. I just picked it up because it was a dollar and I don't know. I'll give it a go at some point. I grabbed Wet Big Teeth by Rose Sabo. This is another YA. I don't even read YA very often, but I'm trying to pick up a few, just, you know, trying to find that one way YA that I'm just absolutely going to love. Eleanor has been estranged from her wild, bloodthirsty family for years. When she flees boarding school after a horrifying incident, she goes to the only place she thinks she is safe, the home she left behind. But when she gets there, she struggles to fit in with her monstrous relatives who prowl the woods around the family's estate and read fortunes in the guts of of birds so we'll see we'll see how i like it i picked up book three of the uh, song of ice and fire series a storm of swords it's a big one um i just read book one a game of thrones and i know i i always like bitch and moan when i have to read these books i'm like my tarot picks my tbr game or whatever just because they're so big but i actually really am excited to continue the series and i'm gradually picking up all of the books um, if you're unfamiliar with the story it has to do with like kings and queens and princes and princesses and battling houses um, it is like a high fantasy with like dragons and like these zombie ice creatures and um, yeah, uh, there's there's a lot going on in this book. But if you haven't seen the show, it's basically like a king dies and now there's all these different houses and royalty people like vying for one specific throne and um, 
all of the secrets and deception and manipulations and politics that go into all of the all of the stuff and it's just it's so interesting it's so good I love all of these characters and it's just it's a fun fun time but the books are <laughs> the books are so huge and this is a series that doesn't have an ending and probably never will so but that's fine that's fine I still love it I found this at my library book sale The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan I do not know what this is about I, I think it does have to do with like traveling fantasy though it looks like it from the cover um i feel like i've heard a ton of people talk about this in on like fantasy booktube but um it says like a classic fantasy tale of the struggle between light and darkness good and evil death and life goodness life and light are always in retreat always about to be defeated but never quite then i found this at my local goodwill for a dollar dollar 29 something like that perfect condition the i got the black tongue thief by christopher bielman i'm not super sure what this is about but i hear um coral from pretty and paper cuts pretty and paper cuts um i hear her talk about this all the time and she really loves the series so i want to give it a go it sounds really cool um truly outstanding i can't say enough good things about the black tongue thief damn good stuff that's awesome. <laughs> um, remarkable, fast and fun and filled with crazy magic. Delight from start to finish. Chock full of wry wit, foul language and characters who arrive on the page with savage, sordid pass hot on their heels. Um, equal parts fairy tale, D&D &D adventure and acid trip. I look forward to returning to this evocative and fucked up world. Um, a fantastical road trip complete with shape-shifting assassins, murderous krakens, and delightfully gruesome magic. Sounds so fun. And then I also found at my local Goodwill, Labyrinth by Kate Moss. I've heard a few people talk about this book, not a whole ton though, but it seems to be like in the vein of the Da Vinci Code. Elegantly written an action-packed adventure of modern conspiracy and medieval passion. Looks like it has to do with like an archaeology an archaeological dig, a quickly paced adventure that wears its considerable learning lightly and of higher literary quality than the Da Vinci Code to which it will inevitably be compared. Three more books. Um, these last ones are romance. This one's romance fantasy. I got the first book in the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. I believe it's about a woman who somehow ends up like going back in the past and then she can't get home yeah she's originally from 1945 and then walks through a standing stone in one of the ancient stone circles that dots the british isles and suddenly she is in 1743 um, hurled back in time by forces she can't understand claire is catapulted into intrigues and dangers that may threaten her life and shatter her heart this is another one that I found at my local Dollar Tree. It is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, but it's like the, the Netflix show adaptation cover, which I don't care. I actually have another edition of Rebecca. I've not read it before, but um, I like that this one was like a floppy paperback. I surprisingly don't know much about what this book is, but I know it's like a gothic fiction classic, and I think it has a romance in it supposed to be hauntingly beautiful so can't wait to read this one eventually and then last but not least I found another Anne Rice novel to add to my collection I'm trying to get all of them this one is Belinda um, I feel like this is like reminiscent of Lolita ish but I think this is either a romance or one of her erotica books, one of her early erotica books. Um, but it says uniquely sensual, provocative, erotic, rich, a lusty contemporary novel. Um, but I think the girl is like 16 in this book, which Anne Rice, she tended to write like some pretty, pretty erotic stuff involving teenagers uh, back in the day. So I don't know. She is the ultimate fantasy. She is a golden-haired object of desire. To Jeremy Walker, a handsome and famous 40-year-old illustrator of children's books, she is a forbidden passion. She is bewitching. She is beguiling. She is 16. 
and she is the most seductive woman Jeremy Walker has ever seen. So yeah, maybe reminiscent of Lolita, but I don't know how how this is going to be written. Um, I've never read Lolita, but I've heard Carol from, I think it's just Carol Reads. I don't know. <laughs> I'll link her channel down below. But I've heard Carol talk about um, Lolita a lot and how that one's not supposed to be seen as a romance, how it's, you know, just about this guy who's obsessing over this young girl and it's supposed to be gross and uncomfortable to read. And Rice and just the stuff that I've read from her, like early stuff, she'll write about teenagers, but um, I don't know. It feels like it's supposed to be erotic. So I don't know if this is going to be written in that so same sort of like just like showing the depravity of like pedophiles or if this is like supposed to be enjoyed as a romance erotic novel I don't know but uh I'll, I want to read it and we'll see we'll see how I feel about it so that is it that is all of the books that I've gotten over the last few months since my last birthday book haul actually no this isn't all of the books that I've gotten I have also hauled a few books in like recent vlogs I tend to like do bookish things frequent thrift stores and stuff like that while I'm filming vlogs and I'll just include books in those I'll, I'll link those videos down below as well um, if you would like to see some random books that I picked up throughout the weeks going to like Goodwill and stuff like that that I didn't want to include here but yeah let me know if you've read any of these books if you love or hate any of these books and um, which ones I should prioritize as always I will leave all of the links and everything to my socials down in the description I will leave links to like all the places that I normally shop that have websites down in the description, thrift books, book outlet, stuff like that. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but the links down below, if you have never shopped through them before and you sign up using my link, you will get some money back for either a future order or that order, and then I get a credit too. So just to let you know. All right, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, please. I usually say if you care to, which always if you care to, you don't have to, but it really does help me out a lot if you subscribe and like and leave a little comment down below saying whatever you want. You don't have to, you don't have to, but it does help me out. Okay, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, I will see you in my next video. Bye!